hello so welcome back to this channel so if you've been very regular you will know that for over three weeks now i've not posted anything on this channel the reason is because i've been working on the most sophisticated course on xamarin android on the internet so this course covers every single thing that you need to know to become a world-class android developer with xamarin so it includes a lot of concept that almost nobody talks about all the really hard stuff that you've been looking for how to do it I took out time to do all of this in this course and it's just for the greater good I found out that there is not enough resources about Xamarin out there so I just figured out I should just get all of them together and show people how to really build real world and beautiful applications with Xamarin so in case you're interested I'll drop the link to the course in the description below now let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial of the day so in this tutorial i want to basically show you how to edit a single record on your firebase database so this is one of the most requested videos since i published a series about how to make use of firebase to build your application so this is more like a continuation of the series so i'm going to put a link to the former videos so that you can watch them and understand what we are doing before you can watch this one so what we basically want to do is to be able to edit the records each of the records for instance if you want to add a new record you just click this button and provide the full name say John Mark and the department say economics and the set is 2019 you can select the status say graduated All right so if I save this information so this automatically saves to Firebase database. Now, if for any reason I figured out that I made a mistake in the department, I should be able to go ahead and edit just the department, right? So instead of us having Department of Economics, maybe John Mark is actually in the Department of Accounting and we just want to make this change. So what I'm going to do will be to pull up the Firebase console. So this is all the data that we'll see in our app. Okay, so this is the last data that we just added. So what I'm going to do will be to go ahead and edit the department for John Mark. Instead of having it as economics, I'm going to have it as accounting. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and long click on John Mark, just like this. So it's going to pop up a dialog asking us to provide updates to this piece of information. So I can simply go ahead and change this from being economics to accounting. So let's go ahead and save the changes. Bam. So as you can see, the department was now changed to accounting and also in our app you can see that John Mark is now in the department of accounting so for instance if you want to change the full name or the set any of those that make sense to you let's say we made mistake both in the name and in the set as well so we can just go ahead and do the same thing I can change the set to 2011 and change the name from John Mark to Gabriel John Gabriel all right <laughs> so I'm very certain that someone's name is John Gabriel. So let's go ahead and click on save changes. Bam! So you can see the changes that we made on the name and on the set. And this has also resolved in our app as well. So we now have John Gabriel and the set is now 2011. So this is exactly what we are going to be doing in this tutorial. So if this is your first time of dropping by by this channel, do well to subscribe and also hit the bell button so that I can always get notified whenever I make this kind of video. So without wasting much time, let's jump right into it. So what I've done is that I've added link to the previous videos before now, and also I've added the link for you to download the previous project. So when you download the project, you'll be able to get to this point, and this is where we can now go ahead and implement the new feature that I want to implement. So at this stage, I believe that you've seen all the videos and you are now in sync with what we are doing. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing we need to do will be to design the dialog, the dialog that pops up, you know, for us to impute values that we want to update to Firebase. So what we need to do will be to go ahead and create a new layout. So we're going to go to layout and we're going to create a new layout file. So I'm going to call this edit alumni. Okay, so our layout has been created. Like I said, we are not going to be, you know, designing this from scratch. Instead, we are going to go to the new Illuminate layout and we are going to copy all the code. We're going to return back to Edit Illuminate. So we're going to go ahead and paste the design that we just copied. 
Alright, so this is exactly what we are going to be having. Now what I'm going to do will be to scroll up a little bit. We need to change this from register alumni to edit alumni. Alright, so we're going to change this to edit alumni. Alright, so that's basically all that we need to do. So also we need to go ahead and change, you know, the test that we have here. So instead of having submit, we're going to change that to save changes. Alright, so this is all we need to do with the design. Now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and create a new dialog fragment. So here in the fragment folder, we're going to click on add new item. And what we want to add is a fragment. So I'm going to change this to edit fragment. Edit alumni fragment rather. So that will be the name of a fragment. So because this is going to be a dialog fragment, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to android.support.v4.app dot dialog fragment all right now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and reference our views the first will be to inflate the layout so i'm gonna have view view so if you've been following the tutorial of course i'm very certain you know how to do all of this so just to ensure that we follow through i'm going to go ahead and just type this out really quick so here we're going to go ahead and provide the new layer that we just created edit alumni and here we can so here we can now go ahead and return view. Now the next thing we need to do will be to reference the views that we have in this layout. That is the, the full name, department, text input layout, the set text input layout, and the submit button. So let's go ahead and reference all of that. So here I'm going to have text input layout. So let's go ahead and resolve this. So this is going to be full name full name test and we're also going to have department test and also we'll have set test now the next thing we need to define will be the button so i'm going to call the save changes button all right now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and reference these views here the instance of these views that we just created so the full name test is going to be equal to test input layout you know view dot find view by id so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for department test, set test, and save, and save changes button. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we've gone ahead to you know, reference all of these views, the department test, set test, and the save changes button. Now, the next thing we need to do will be to create a constructor that we are going to be using to receive the information that we want to edit into this fragment. So why we had to do that is because if you check in the completed project, if we right click at this point, when this dialog is being created, we are actually receiving the information of the, the alumni that we really want to make edits to. So we are going to be using a constructor to receive the information that we are going to be displaying in this test input layout. So let's go ahead and create a constructor. So to do that, I'm going to scroll up a little bit. So at this point, let's go ahead and make our constructor. So I'm going to have public edit alumni fragment. So the constructor is going to take in a parameter, an alumni parameter. So let's go ahead and resolve this. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do will be to create a global variable that is going to take in this parameter. Okay. So here I'm going to go ahead and say alumni. So I'm going to name this variable this alumni. So inside of our constructor, this alumni will be equal to alumni. All right. Now, the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and assign the values in the alumni to the test input layout. So to do that, I'm going to come here and say full name test dot edit test dot test will be equal to this alumni. So full name edit test dot test will be equal to this alumni dot full name. Now, department test dot edit test dot test will be equal to this alumni dot department now for the set we're gonna have set test dot edit test dot test this should be equal to this alumni dot set and also if you want to display the status on the status spinner all you just need to do is to go ahead and reference the status spinner and you can pass the value to it and everything is just the same so to ensure that we don't spend all of our time setting up the status spinner, so I just figured out that it's best that we just make use of the test input layout 
to actually exemplify how to edit already existing data on Firebase database. So now that we have all of this, the next thing I need to do, now the next thing we need to do will be to go back into our main activity and implement this dialog fragment. So all we just need to do at this moment is to verify that we are appropriately passing the data to this dialog fragment. And when we long click on a particular row, all the data concerning that particular alumina will be showing up in this dialog fragment. So let's go ahead and implement this dialog fragment in our main activity. So here in the main activity, we have to do that is in where we set up our adapter. So we're gonna look for where we set up our adapter. Now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and say adapter. And also if you really want to learn more about how to set up recycler views and recycler view adapter, I'm going to put a link in the video so you can go ahead and check it out. In that way you'll be able to get more understanding on how to work with recycler views and recycler view adapters. So we've successfully created an event handler for our adapter long click. So what we want to do in this adapter long click is to retrieve the particular alumina that we just clicked upon. So I'm going to go ahead and define a new instance of alumina. So I'm going to call this this alumina. So this is going to be equal to alumni list. So if you remember appropriately, this is the list that contains all the alumina that we saved on our Firebase database. So when we retrieve the data from Firebase database, they are always saved in the alumni list. So what we want to do here is to retrieve a particular item from this list and which is the one that we clicked upon. So we can just go ahead and pass it the index that we clicked upon. So this will go ahead and retrieve the particular alumina that we are interested in. Now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and set up the edit alumni fragment. So I'm going to have edit alumni fragment. So it is going to be equal to new alumni fragment. Now we're going to go ahead and pass this alumina that we just retrieved into our dialog fragment. So because we've already added all the necessary code in our dialog fragment, so we are very certain that when we show up this dialog fragment, all the data is going to show up. All right, and finally, I'm going to go ahead and say edit alumni fragment dot show. And we're going to pass it our transaction manager and some tag. All right, so before we go ahead and edit the data on Firebase database, let's first of all confirm that the data that we want to edit is showing up. So let's go ahead and run the app first of all. All right, so our app is starting. Boom, so we have our data. So if I long click on this, I expect to see all the information about John Gabriel pop up. Okay, so everything is just working as we expected. So we have the full name, accounting, 2011, as I said, and we have this as Adjit Alumina. All right, so now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and update this information on Firebase database. So to do that, I'm going to go back into the Edit Alumina fragment. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a click event listener for our Save Changes button. So I'm going to have Save Changes button dot click. Now the next thing we need to do will be to grab the values in the test input layout. Okay, so this is going to be a string. I'm going to call this string full name. So this is going to be a call to full name test dot edit test dot test. So in case we've changed the original full name, what we want to do is to grab the new full name that we want to update to Firebase. So the next thing I need to do will be to define a new string. I'm going to call this department. So this is going to be equal to department test dot edit test dot test. So let's do the same thing for set. All right. So now that we successfully retrieved the values, all we just need to do is to go ahead and update each of these values on Firebase database. So just like the way we saved our data in the first place, we saved it to a particular reference. So I'm going to pull up our add alumni fragment so that we'll see exactly what we did. So as you can see, all data is being saved to a particular reference, okay? So all we just need to do is to create a new reference to the data that we want to edit and replace the value that we have therein. So let's go ahead and do that. So all I need to do will be to go ahead and say app data helper. So we all know that the app data helper class helps us to 
retrieve instances of our database. So I'm going to go ahead and resolve this. So we're going to call da get database. And after that, we're going to get reference. So now we're going to go ahead and pass the reference that we want to edit. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up our console so that I explain something here. So if we want to edit this data accounting, firstly, we need to get reference of the entire database, which is the get reference statement. And if we pass it the alumni and pass it this ID and pass it department. So any new data that we save to this reference is going to replace what we originally have here, which is accounting. And also in the same vein, if we have a reference that has alumni, this ID and full name. So whichever value that we write to this particular reference is going to replace whatever we have as the full name of this particular alumni. So that's basically the flow. So let's go ahead and put that in code. So firstly, I'm going to pass it alumni, which is more like um, the database root. All right now, the next thing we need to do will be to pass it the ID of the alumni that we want to edit, which in this regard, we save this alumni ID. Now, the next thing we need to do will be to pass in the database ID of this particular alumni. So we can find that in this alumni.id. So this is the ID of this particular alumni, which is what we see here. Okay, so this is going to be the ID, things like this or this or this or this, depending on the particular alumni that we want to make changes to. Now, the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and add the particular field that we want to edit. So let's take, for instance, we want to edit full name. So we are going to put a path to full name. So in the end, we're going to go ahead and set the value. So whichever value that we set here is going to replace the original value that we had as the full name. So I'm going to go ahead and set the new full name. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for department and set. So this is going to be app data helper dot get database dot get reference. It's going to be alumni. Now the next is going to be the ID, and the next is going to be the department, and then we're going to go ahead and set the value. So lastly, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for set. And here the reference is going to be alumni. And then we're going to pass in the ID, and we're going to pass it the set. Then we're going to set the value, and the value is going to be set. Okay guys, something that we should take note of is that we should always remember to add the backward slash. This is very important. If not, you're going to run into issues because the parts won't be correct. So parts are actually separated by backward slash. So I'm going to pull up my console and I'm going to show you why this is important. So if I click into this particular field, so you can see the part. So this is alumni slash the ID slash department. So, so this is the part that we're actually referring to. So it always has to have a backward slash. So with that being said, the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and close this dialog fragment after we successfully updated our database. So I'm going to say this dot dismiss. Bam. So this is basically all that we need to do. Now to verify that everything worked just the way we expected, I'm going to go ahead and run this. So we already know that our app is automatically listening to snapshot changes. So if we add a new data or edit a new data on the database, it will automatically resolve on our app. So we don't need to worry about that. So now that our app is loading, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the console so that we can see the changes happen in real time. Okay, so we have our data. So the first thing I want to do will be to go ahead and change the department where John Gabriel belongs to. Instead of him belonging to accounting, I want him to be in economics. So I'm going to go ahead and long click on this. Bam. So we're going to go ahead and change this from accounting to economics. All right. So now let's go ahead and click on save changes. Bam. So as you can see, this has changed from accounting to economics. And if we hold this down, and we decide to change his name from John Gabriel back to John Mark. So I could just do that, John Mark. And say his set is not 2011, his set is 2016. So I can now go ahead and click on Save Changes, and we know what will happen. The data is going to change both on our app and our database. Bam! So as you can see, when I have set as 2016, and John Mark as the new name 
and the department remains the same, no different. So we can go ahead and do the same thing for any other alumni. So let's say we want to change this guy's name back to Edward Nodim. I can just go ahead and delete this and change his department from economics to computer science. So we'll click on save changes. You can see um, the highlight that happened on the ID means that the data has been successfully changed. There is still more to making use of Firebase database, but this is basically how to make edits to every single data you have on Firebase database. So if you really enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up to this video. Then hit the notification bell so that you can always get notified whenever I make this kind of video. So guys, this will be all for now and see you soon.